Kansas State has been known for great man-to-man -man players and great man-to-man -man technique over the years. This is how we teach man-to-man -man here at Kansas State. You'll see some, uh, some demonstration. You'll see some practice footage. You'll see some game footage. All of those things will come into play as we try and teach these techniques. I hope we can help you with your football team. I hope some of these ideas and these drills can be successful for you. Okay, we're going to start out with press technique, all right? And the first uh, technique that we're going to talk about is slide uh, from a press alignment. And again, we talked about that being an aggressive at the line, uh, trying to reroute the wide receiver technique. All right, alignment, we, we talk about alignment, stance, key, and technique. All right, the alignment, now if we assume that the ball is in here and I'm the quarterback, all right, the ball is in here, so Randy is playing left corner, okay? The alignment we want is going to be shaded inside or outside based on the split of the wide receiver. Okay, Mo is the wide receiver. Randy is, uh, he's got a medium to large split. He'll shade it inside. And all that means is his outside foot is in the crotch of the wide receiver. It's a slight inside shade. Okay, if, if Mo's got a short split, and that's determined by game plan, then Randy would shade it the other way with his, with his inside foot in the crotch of Mo, shade him on the outside. Okay? The alignment, we want to be one arm's length distance away from the wide receiver. So as Randy just reaches out, he wants to have enough room that he can just reach his arm out and keep that kind of distance. Obviously, if Mo is off the line as a wide receiver, Randy wants to crowd as much as he can to the line of scrimmage without being offside with his helmet. Okay? Back up on the line there, Mo. Okay, the stance now that we want out of Randy. All right, we want a flat back stance, square feet, okay? Weight on the balls of his feet, right there. All right, now his, flat, his back is flatter. Randy's a tall player, and he doesn't get as, as flat backed as some of the uh, smaller, shorter guys, and that's fine. It's got to be a comfort thing, but for, for the most part, we want a good flat back right in here like this. We want our feet shoulder width apart and parallel. All right, and now Randy's hands should be in position to, to jam, okay? Right there. They don't have to be way up. As long as the wrist is cocked up, we're in good shape. Okay, there's, let's see the stance again, Randy. All right, now, the key, our eyes need to be below the waist, all right? We're looking at the waist or below, all right? One of the things that I believe that you can even be more specific by focusing on the inside thigh of the wide receiver. The inside thigh of the wide receiver uh, will have to cross over for him to run a fade route, okay? So that's, that's the, the uh, point that we want to be with our eyes uh, as, we, uh, uh, as we get in our stance. Okay, Randy, give us, give us that look right there. Eyes down low right there, good. Hands ready to punch. All right, good. All right, now, the initial movement that we want with this technique is going to be side to side. We're going to slide, and that's the name of the technique. So if Maurice moves this way in his release, Randy will step with his, with his near foot and slide to stay in front. The idea is that we want to force the receiver to alter his route. We want to flatten him off on his release. We don't want vertical releases. We want horizontal releases, outside or inside. All right, so if Mo releases outside, Randy will step with that near foot and and, and slide that other foot. Now, the key is that we don't cross those feet over. Okay, Randy, show them what would happen if you cross those feet over. Uh, start outside and then come back under. All right, if Randy crosses over, we've got a real problem right there. Okay, see it again. Now, same, same move. Now, uh, RJ, keep your feet apart and show what can happen. All right, there, and then we come back and we're in good shape. So as long as we slide with them and keep our feet apart and keep our feet good and wide uh, with our knees bent, we should be in good shape, okay? All right, now, we talk in the punch, we talk about the shock hand and the control hand, okay? Now, the shock hand is the hand in the direction that he's going, and that, all that hand does is keeps us in front of the receiver. So if Mo releases outside, Randy slides and shocks with his outside hand, okay? Now, that's just a very brief shock by that hand, and he doesn't get a whole lot on him sometimes. As, as that happens now, after the shock hand, then Randy will transfer to the control hand, right there. And as he, as he transfers to the control hand, he will pivot and open up. Okay, let's see it the other way now. Release it inside, 
Okay, Randy will shock with his right hand as he steps. We want to step. All right, now the pivot. And now as Mo down, is down the field, we pivot and control, okay? Now, once we, once we shock and we're into the control position, we want that, we want that elbow locked and we want our thumb up and we want, that, we want that jam in the armpit of that wide receiver, okay? So as you release it in again, all right, as Randy slides and shocks, now the control, he's locked it out. Now do it the other way. All right, lock that elbow, control it with your thumb up. That's the strongest position we can be in. All right, once again, we want to be in control. Lock that elbow and let the wide receiver carry you down the field. Let him do the work. If we're locked here, then his momentum will carry you into, into phase, okay? So we're in good shape there. All right, now, once we've executed the slide technique and we're in the control position, now the rest of it is how we handle down the field. Okay, so Mo, we want to release outside. Randy is going to slide. He's going to shock control. Now we're down the field. Randy's eyes are on the hip. Okay, stop right there. That's perfect position. We are still upfield on the wide receiver. We're deeper than the receiver. We're locked out with our elbow and our eyes are on that near hip, okay? All right, now, go down that, uh, uh, take that down the field to the numbers and then stutter down one time. Okay, now watch this. Down the field, Randy's got control. All right, his eyes are low. The wide receiver stutters and we, we mirror that move as we stutter down and sink our hips as well. Okay? All right, now, if we're in the downfield position, Randy's down the field, Mo takes him up to the numbers and then tries to cross his face. In other words, try and get back underneath him. We need to practice that. There's a, there's a technique that we use. We call it switchbacks, okay? So Randy was going to take him up the field. Mo's going to cross his face, and Randy's going to switch back and reset that hand and open the hips with his eyes on the, on the, uh, the waist and the, and the hip all the way. Now that's the best way. We would use that switchback technique where we reopen as long as that receiver is within the framework of our body and we can get our hands on it. But if Randy got up too high in his position and Mo would, would slap his hand down and go across his face, then Randy would need to use a speed turn, reset the hand on his jam and uh, switch back with a speed turn. Now watch that one. Reset that hand as quick as possible, right there in that jam position. Good. All right, now uh, we need to talk about playing routes. Once we've received that, you know, we've put ourselves in that position, in the downfield control position, now it's basically recognizing routes and breaking uh, appropriately. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna put ourselves in the downfield position and cover the fade route now, okay? All right, Ched, Cedric's gonna walk the fade route, Corey is gonna cover, and he's gonna get into a position that we call a lean and locate position, where he wants to pin his hip on the hip of the wide receiver and try to lean him out of bounds as he locates the ball. Now, the one thing that we gotta be careful with is that we don't wanna locate the football too soon. We wanna make sure that we're past the comeback area before we turn and look for that ball. As we lean and locate down the field, we want to stay in contact. We want to lean, pin our hip to his hip, and there'll be some incidental contact, you know, as we slap hands as we're running down the field. We're not going to put our arm out to impede the progress of the wide receiver. Uh, that would be pass interference. Okay, to walk the route here, said, and show us what we want here. All right, good, right there. There's where we are now down the field. Cedric takes off down the boundary. Corey's in good position. Now we want to pin, pin our hip to his hip, lean, and now we're past the comeback area, locate the football right there. All right, now st stop right there. That is the fit position that we want to be in. With Corey's shoulder in front of Cedric's shoulder, hip to hip, Corey has pinned Cedric's hip to the boundary and he's leaning him out of bounds. All right, come on back, fellas. Okay, now we're going to talk about the slant, okay? All right, we're going to try and beat the slant in there. You're going to slide and control that thing and try and play the slant here, okay? All right, just walk the slant. There it is. Now right there. Okay, good. Now stop right there. At that point, uh, Corey's in great control of Cedric right there. If that ball is thrown on the slant, all right, and turn around and go this way on the slant, fellas, so that, so that we can get it on the camera. Start, start right there and go that way on the slant, okay, so the ball's in there. All right, watch this. Walk the slant right there. Now as Corey plays right there, if the ball is thrown, Corey wants to dig his right shoulder underneath for that football, right there, to go after that ball, okay? 
and that's how he'll make the play on the slant, okay? All right, come on back, fellas. And that's what we want. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about a stop route or, a, or an out uh, and how we want to play the shoulders now, okay? I right, said release slightly outside and run a stop route, okay, at five. All right, here's Corey. He's in the downfield position. Cedric stops right there. Now, turn back to the ball, Ced. There you go, right there. Now, Corey's job is to make sure that he plays the upfield shoulder of the wide receiver. He doesn't want to cut underneath that because then we're vulnerable to the stop and go. He wants to play the upfield shoulder of the wide receiver. Okay, Sid, come on back down here and run a quick out now at five. All right, now, here's the out cut. All right, Corey's in the downfield control position. Right there, locks it out. Cedric runs an out cut. We are staying on the upfield shoulder. We don't want to undercut that thing. As long as we're on the upfield shoulder, then if Cedric turns up on the, on the out and up, go on, go on up, then Corey's got a chance now to jam again and reset that upfield position. All right, come on back, good. Okay, the first drill that we teach slide technique is what we call a punch drill. And what we're trying to do here is teach the first step and the shock hand only. All right, punch drill is gonna look like this, where the, where the wide receiver will just take one step, we'll step and punch right there, and then we'll reset, okay, step and punch, and then reset, and go, he'll go both directions. Try not to make it uh, uh, predictable, and that's all we want right there. Okay, you guys jump up and do that full speed. Give me about five each way. Okay, right there, good. And of course, you know, and go ahead and put your jam right there on, on his uh, breastplate there. Okay, said good. All right, and again, we want that jam to be right here in the, on the, in the armpit and on the number. Okay, the next drill that we work on is what we call a mirror dodge drill. Again, all we're trying to emphasize here is the initial position and keeping that initial position on the release. All right, so what we're gonna do, Randy is the wide receiver. He's got five yards to move back and forth and try and shake the, uh, the defensive back. Now, Moe's job is to make sure that he stays in front. The whole idea of slide technique is that we stay in front of the wide receiver and reroute him, make him flatten off one way or the other and not get vertical releases. So we're, gonna, we're not gonna use our hands here in this mirror drill. We're just gonna slide with our hands in position to punch, but it's a footwork drill and that's all. Eyes need to be below the waist on the inside thigh or on the, on the belt buckle. We need to make sure that we stay in front. Okay, here's the, here's the mirror dodge drill. Okay, good, stay in front of him, that's it. Feet apart, all right, stop. Okay, you guys go full speed on this now. Go, good, right there, that's what we want. We wanna make it as realistic as possible. Good job with his feet, good, stop. The key there is that we keep our feet apart and that we keep our feet moving and sliding uh, in, in phase together, no crossover, that's the idea. Okay, the next drill we call flatten the release drill. All it is is a release drill. We're emphasizing the point that we want to flatten the release of the wide receiver. We don't want him vertical. We want him to, to either bow out or inside in a flat manner where he can't get down the field with speed. All right, so all we do is we ask the receiver to give him a realistic release at the line of scrimmage and then release to the numbers as, as far as he can. The receiver is going to try not to let the, the defensive back flatten him too far. And of course, that's the object of the drill. All right, so Moe's gonna use the shock hand and the control hand to flatten the wide receiver's release all the way up to the numbers. Okay, here we go. Good, right there, all the way to the numbers. Okay, these guys are gonna do it full speed here. Make sure you got an arm's length of separation, Said Move back a little bit there, there you go. Okay, on you. Good, right there, flatten it off. Okay, and we want that wide receiver to, to, to do the best he can to, to juke him and get up the field as tight as he can uh, in a realistic manner. Okay, the next drill is what we call the stutter drill. We're gonna take a release at the line of scrimmage and all the principles of, of defeating the release uh, are in play. Then as we get downfield in the downfield control position with the, with the arm locked, we're gonna ask the wide receiver to stutter down as if he was making a, a break, an out cut and in, uh, a stop, anything like that at about the numbers. Then he's gonna go on down the field five more yards and stutter once again. Our defensive back in the control position, Mo is gonna be in that control position with his eyes on the hip, and he's gonna stutter down with that wide receiver as he goes. This puts him in position to make his final break as the wide receiver goes into his break. Okay, fellas, on you, RJ. 
There it is right there. Lock him out. Stutter. Good. Eyes down on that hip. That's good. Okay. Either way on the release. That's it. Good position. All right. That's what we want. Good. All right. The next drill is what we call the switchback drill. Again, we're going to execute the release of the line of scrimmage up the field, and then the wide receiver is going to cross the face of the, of the cover corner. All right, and we're going, to ex we're going to switch back in both manners. Uh, this time, we're going to open up within the framework of our body. Okay, there'll be two switchbacks in this drill. Okay, on you, Mo. Good release. There it is. There's the position. There's the first switchback. He works up the field. There's the second switchback. All the while, Randy's eyes were down on the hip. And as he switched back, he reset that hand, reset that hand in the armpit and locked that elbow out with a thumb up. Okay, here we go. On you, Sid. Good. Right there, lock it out. Good. There's one switch back. There's two switch backs. Good. There's three. There's four. All right. New record. And we're going to switch back in a position where the wide receiver clubs his arm down, clubs the defensive back's arm down, or the defensive back gets too high where he needs to use a speed turn to switch back. Okay, on you, Mo. Good release again. Good technique. Switch back, reset. Switch back, reset. Good. Nice job. Okay, here we go. On you, Sid. Good position. Good switch back, reset that hand. Good switch back, good. All right, that's the switch back drill. Okay, the next drill is what we call lean and locate, and that drill is just a, a, fade, dr a fade route drill. Again, the, we're going to execute a release of the line of scrimmage. Mo is going to run the fade, and Randy is going to get in that downfield position, that control position, and then he's going to pin his hip and use the lean and locate technique. Usually there's a ball involved here. Sometimes we'll start out early in practice without a ball. Later on, we'll put the ball in there and throw it uh, and either make it a live dog fight or uh, ask the wide receiver to just not go for the football so that our defensive back can, can uh, attack the ball without the risk of injury. Okay, here we go. On you, Mo. Good, right down the field. Now Randy pins his hip, and then that ball will be thrown at that point. Okay? All right, here we go, fellas. Now let's make it a full speed thing here, Sid. Okay, on the fade ball. Full speed, take it all the way down to about the 40 yard line. Now, long fade. On you. Right there it is. All right, now the ball will be thrown, and the defensive back will go get that football. That's just a, what we call a lean and locate drill. Remember now that we, we cannot put our arm out and impede the progress, so we've got to work hard on continuing to run and not lean, uh, reaching out with that hand. Okay. Okay, this next technique is what we call motor and mirror. It's the same uh, basic alignment and stance as our slide technique, but now we're going we're gonna to try and push down the field just a little bit using a baby back pedal just to give us a little change up on the fade route. In other words, we're going we're gonna to let the wide receiver waste his movement at the line of scrimmage. We're going to back off just a hair, and then we're going to play slide technique down the field at about two yards. So if you watch, if you're just looking at Randy without a receiver, just show us how that baby back pedal looks. Same stance, same alignment, just a baby back pedal there, again, with our hands ready to punch, RJ, as you, as you, as you pedal back out of there, okay, as, the, as you use the baby back pedal. Once again, right there, good. We want a wide stance. We don't want it. We don't want a narrow base and a back pedal here. This is a baby back pedal. We're not trying to increase cushion. We're just trying to encourage the wide receiver to use up his moves at the line of scrimmage. This is a technique that we'll use against receivers off the ball, and it'll also be a changeup that we use against receivers on the ball. The, the, the vulnerability here is on the slant. We've helped ourselves on the fade. We've helped ourselves on vertical releases. We've hurt ourselves on the slant. So we need to make sure when we're using motor and mirror that we shade inside just a little bit more, all right, or shade outside just a little bit more if that's the, the, the uh, technique and if that's where the help is coming from. Okay, here we go. Now, all I want, uh, Mo, is just you to, to walk down the field and eat up that cushion and then release down the field on RJ, okay? All right, here we go. All right, on you. 
right there, and there it is. Now there won't be any shock hand involved here. Now it's all control and pivot. Okay, guys, jump in. All right, on you. Good, right there, lock it, and there's the downfield position. Okay, good. All right, so really all we're trying to do is give him a change up at levels. Try to make that release difficult so that he doesn't always know the technique that we're playing. Obviously, when you've got a guy off the line of scrimmage, it's a lot easier to, you know, th this is one technique uh, that can really help you because he's got a lot of room to maneuver against the slide technique. But slide still works when he's off the line of scrimmage as well. Okay, the next drill is really the, the drill that we work uh, motor and mirror. Uh, and that is what we call a mirror dodge drill, but we're working down the field at angles. Uh, and we're just working on this uh, baby back pedal type of technique, trying to stay in front and trying to open our hips as we go down the field. Mo is going to use the mirror dodge drill that we used a minute ago, but he's going to work at angles down the field. And Randy's going to shuffle and keep his feet apart and not using his hands to jam, all right, but just using his feet to stay in front of this guy as he moves down the field. So this is a good simulation of, of the, the body positioning of motor and mirror. Okay, Mo, on you. Right there, right there, good. Trying to stay, that's good. Okay, you guys? Good, right there, right there, good. All right, and that drill is trying to work on keeping our feet apart and moving down the field with the receiver. This next technique is what we call catch. This is a technique where, we, where safeties at, will line up in a high position in a two shell, uh, looking like they've got zone coverage, and will drop into a man coverage. Generally, it's with the free safety, but not always. It's also with our man across the board. In this case, Maurice is going is to line up at 10, but when the ball is snapped, he's going he's to close up okay, to the line of scrimmage. As he closes up, Randy is moving down the field on him. And at a certain point, when Randy starts to close the cushion, two or three yards from Mo, Mo will then execute motor and mirror technique that we worked on at the line of scrimmage. So he's going to close up and then start to push back with Randy in a motor and mirror type of technique. Now, we'll always understand our leverage here. We understand that wherever our leverage is, there's a lot of room for that wide receiver to work. So if Mo is playing outside leverage, with a free safety to his inside, then he's got to make sure that he keeps that outside leverage and actually moves his feet in such a manner that he can keep his outside leverage, even if Randy is working to the outside. If he's got inside leverage with no help, and it's a, it's a full blitz or something like that, then he's got to pr pr protect the inside first. And he's got to move his feet in that motor and mirror type of scenario where he's in the baby back pedal and just kind of bouncing his feet and sliding to the inside. At that point, it's just you know, the slide technique once Randy has closed it on him. Okay, now walk into this, Randy. You know, a little bit, jog into it, a little bit more than there. Most closes up, now it becomes motor and mirror, and then he works the release right there. As Randy would go by him, then he would jam and run. Okay, close up and go the, out, the other way on, on your release. Okay, close up as far as you can, Mo, till he, till he closes that cushion. Okay, go. There it is right there, perfect. That's the technique. All right, and again, we want to keep the leverage that we've got, uh, that we've got uh, uh, in play. All right, so Mo, if you're playing on Randy's uh, outside over there, and Randy wants an outside release, you've got, you got to force him inside. Try that, Randy. Try an outside release on him. All right, go. Perfect, right there. Okay, and that's where we want to be. And Mo, you'll use your hands as he, as he runs by you. Now, Mo, work with an inside release. Randy, try and release to the inside. All right, it's, it's, a, it's a feel. It's a, uh, it's a technique that takes a lot of work to understand when that cushion is broken and when you need to motor off. Okay, on you. Right there, good.
All right, the next kind of man-to-man -man coverage that we're talking about is pedal man or off man. In other words, when we're in a situation where, uh, where we want to play in our back pedal, and that, that will be one of the tools that we'll use. Uh, we prefer to be aggressive at the line of scrimmage, but we're also uh, able to play in our back pedal, and some of us do it better than others. All right, now, again, looking at alignment, uh, if the ball is, is into uh, Maurice's left, Randy is the left corner, okay, in this case with the, with the uh, quarterback in here. Uh, we'll take inside leverage unless we get a short split. All right, then Randy, show him the outside position that you want to be in. We want to move to an outside leverage position. Once again, we have to exaggerate inside or outside leverage based on the fact that he, we're so far off. We've given him a lot of room to work. So if Randy's got to protect the inside, then he's got to be more than just a shade, just a, a foot to crotch relationship. He's got to at least be foot to foot and maybe even a little bit further inside to protect the inside because there's a lot of room to work. Vice versa if it, if it was an outside, uh, uh, if it was an outside um, uh, leverage position. Okay, we want to be five to seven yards off the man based on the, the relative speed that we have in relation to the guy that we're covering. And we want to make sure that we have enough room that we can allow that cushion to, to close without, without losing it too soon. We want to stay in our back pedal as long as possible. Randy wants to, to keep the position that he started with as long as he can into the route. Okay? So, as we, as we come off the line of scrimmage, Randy's stance is going to be his regular stance with his outside foot up, uh, outside foot up and his inside foot back, flat back, okay, weight out over his toes, okay, and he's got, uh, and he's in position now. I don't care what he does with his hands, let him, let him hang. Uh, we don't need him up here, just be comfortable. All right, we want our back foot staggered at least, at least toe to heel, and in some cases, Randy's got long legs, so he staggers him even further, okay? All right, now, as we come off the line of scrimmage, our key, the first key is gonna be the quarterback for the three-step. We call that zone eyes and we want to take a quick peek at the quarterback through our first and second step. As we come off, we're going to push off the front foot, step with the back foot, all right, and we want to take zone eyes, we want to be in zone eyes for a couple of steps, and then we want to snap our eyes right back to that inside thigh or the belt buckle, okay? So as Randy comes off, he does not want to come off any faster than the receiver takes him off. In other words, we want to come off in that back pedal in a slow manner uh, in which we mirror the speed of the wide receiver. Okay, or watch the release now. Mo just comes straight off the ball. Right there, okay? Quick zone eyes and now his eyes go right back. Okay, come on back. Now that inside position that we want to preserve is important to keep because most receivers are not going to come off the line of scrimmage straight. They're going to weave off the line of scrimmage at angles. All right, so Mo, take your release off at a 45 degree angle. Randy has got to now weave in his back pedal. In other words, he's got a back pedal trying to keep his hips and shoulders as square to the line of scrimmage as possible so that he still has a two-way go, all right? And he wants to make sure that he keeps that inside position. Whatever inside position he started with, he wants to keep it as long as he can down the field. Okay, Mo, we're going to release inside at a 45. Randy is weaving inside to keep that position. Good. As we weave inside, we still have to push down the field to keep our vertical uh, cushion as well. We keep the horizontal position, we keep our initial leverage, and we keep our, as much of our uh, vertical cushion as possible. Okay, now, come on back to the line, Mo. Now, push straight off on Randy. The next concept we've got to teach is cushion. And here's what we tell our guys. Stay in your back pedal until that wide receiver breaks your cushion. And the cushion that we're trying to preserve is three yards. Once he's within that three yard cushion, we've got to get out and go. All right, understanding that it's going to take us a while to get out of our back pedal and get into the downfield position that we want, which is arm's length locked out position. All right, so as Mo releases off the line of scrimmage and Randy back pedals, eventually he's going to eat that cushion up and then once he gets within three, Randy's got to turn, and now he will use that downfield position and lock his hand. All right, come on, fellas. Now, turn the other way, stay here, Billy, and go that way down the field, okay? Same, same drill. All right, Randy's got inside position. Watch the cushion now from the side. Okay, on you, Mo. Right there, okay? All right, come on back. Okay, now this is the cushion uh, that we're trying to preserve, the vertical cushion, as we keep our initial position to the inside. Okay, you guys do that one time, okay? Okay, good. There's a good weave, he's got that inside position, now the cushion's broken and he breaks. 
and Corey was over exaggerating that inside uh, uh, position, but that was a pretty good deal. Okay, the first drill now is a, is a weave drill that we're going to do. As Randy releases off the line of scrimmage, he's going to come off at 45 degree angles, and Mo is going to stay in his back pedal all the way through this drill. They're not, we're not going to break the vertical cushion, and he's going to weave to keep that initial alignment. Okay, Randy, on you. Good, perfect. Okay, guys. That's it, good. Excellent. And you can see in that back pedal that we're trying to keep our hips as square to the line of scrimmage as possible, so we've got a two-way go with our hips at the end. Okay. All right, this, this drill is what we call our cushion drill. And again, we're going to line up five to seven yards with our inside or outside shade and in our back pedal. We're going to start with zone eyes on the first two steps. Corey is going to try and run straight past Cedric. He's going to try and just beat him down the field. We're going to stay in our back pedal as long as we can until we break and we get a feel for that three-yard cushion. Then we're going to get out of there and turn down the field and get in the downfield control position. Okay, Corey, on you. Good zone eyes, eyes back on the receiver, right there, good drill. And now we're going to put him on an outside shade, same thing. Now turn your stance around, said, so that your outside foot's up. Okay, good. All right, on you. Good. All right. And that's what we want to do is make sure we don't break that cushion down. Okay, now this is a weave cushion drill. All right, again, now Corey's going to come off at an angle, push Cedric to weave in his back pedal, and then try and get deep on him, and we're trying to keep our vertical cushion as well as our inside uh, leverage in this case uh, as far as we can, as long as we can. Okay, on you, Corey. Good, right there. All right. Uh, with, with the pedal man, everything else now is breaking on the, on the different routes, outcuts, slant routes, uh, and trying to, to put yourself in position on the upfield shoulder. Uh, and then to strip the football or go for the interception. And the fade route and the post route and all those routes now, once we've drilled the initial movement, it's all one-on-one -on -one stuff at this point. This is how we teach man-to-man -man technique at Kansas State. I hope some of these ideas and some of these drills can help you become a better man-to-man -man football team.